Hi and welcome to another ESM training video clip. In this clip I'm going to take you through the TRIO scanning process for a set of orthodontic models. So we're going to work with just a standard set of models, uh, stone models. I think it's going to give us a good uh, overview of TRIOs, how we create an order, how we use the scanner um, and hopefully I'm going to be able to point out some tips and tricks which will make sure that you can get a, a really good scan using your TRIOs with uh, using best practices and hopefully it's going to be a nice easy journey for for you all um, so let's start off with the the software so this is our welcome screen uh, in the software we're presented with the calendar the calendar for today we want to create a new order so in order to do so we can select the relevant time slot or if we wish we can create a new order on the fly so the first thing the software asks us is well where is the data going to as an orthodontic case, the chances are it's going to go to your internal uh, database. Um, alternatively, if you want to send a scan straight out to your, your preferred Trios Ready lab, you can do so by selecting the lab from the list. But I'm just going to go ahead and select that it's the practice ortho lab, which means it's the internal lab, which means the data is going to reside in-house on your ortho analyzer database. The information we need to enter here, um, starting off with the patient's ID, first name and last name and that's it we cannot we can enter some comments we can enter some operator information if we so wish so we'll just put some numbers in there put some figures in there and we're ready to go so we're presented on the top row this is our kind of our main workflow first stage is to create the order second stage is to create the scan third stage is to carry out some analysis if required third stage is to send and where is the data going to go? Again, it depends on which lab you have chosen. So if you've chosen your internal practice lab, when we hit send, the data will go into our OrthoAnalyzer database. However, if we've selected an external lab, when we hit send, the data will go straight out there through the Communicate platform to, to that lab. So we're more concerned about scanning. So we're going to go through the click on, on scan you may have noticed there that a message came up to say that my um, my order form was not complete so we need to make sure that all the uh, required fields are are completed and then we can go into the, the scan mode the software gives us a little um, kind of guide as to what we should do first thing it says is remove the protective tip so we're going to remove the protective tip and replace it with a scanning tip. Obviously the scanning tip needs to be clean. It's uh, autoclaving is the, the standard required um, method. Some of the other tips, tips that were pointed out there related to the workflow, related to the scanning process. What we, will, what we like to do, if we just take a tip and I'll just take my uh, model. So we've got a lower model and an upper model and of course they sit together really nicely in occlusion. When we're scanning we like to go through three stages. We scan the occlusal surface first. Now we've got to consider what restrictions we have, uh, what kind of restrictions we have to movement of the tip. It's a stone model. Of course, it's nice and easy and we could, we could do that. Now, if that was a real patient, the patient isn't going to be too obliging. Um, so we need to consider the fact that the, the tip can only approach from the frontal region. So we start with an occlusal scan and we move the tip from the back forward across the anterior region and back to the posterior region. When we're doing that we do want to make sure that the scan window is as possible, as much as possible, positioned centrally over the teeth. In fact sometimes we might, li might like to leave a bias to one side or the other side or when we're taking a buccal scan for example we might try and keep it nice and low. The reason being that if we keep it too high, well then there's a risk that we're going to scan as well as scanning the tooth, we're going to scan the tongue, the tongue is soft tissue and that can cause the scanner some issues. Um, but plus by keeping it down nice and low, it does mean as well we're going to make sure we're capturing all of the tooth in one go plus some of the, the uh, gingiva as well. So going back to the scan process, the standard scan process is we start the posterior region on one side, on, either on the right or the left, it doesn't really matter. And as much as we can, we're going to try and capture the occlusal surface in one sweep. Once we've done that, then we're free to rotate over. We can rotate and scan lingually or palatally. 
and we roll over and then we can scan on the buckle side as well. We scan buckle, we scan around the anterior region. Now again, we're not going to be able to continue in this particular flow, so we can just pull away, we can stop the scanner if we wish, we don't have to. We can pull away, make contact, again make sure that the software just catches up, make sure the software is, is capturing data, and as soon as we get that indication, we can push backwards. If we prefer, we can stop at this point, so we've come around the buckle, and now we're at the labial area, we could stop the scanner and we could say right we want to restart from this position we indicate that to the software and restart from that position roll over and sweep forward and at that point we should have a really good scan one really important thing we want to watch out for though is the occlusal scan when we're scanning the occlusal surface and we come around to the anterior region if we consider the geometry, the anatomy of the anterior teeth are quite vertical compared to all of the other teeth. So it's important that as we come around to the front that we rock the tip, rock the tip, forward and back, up and down. So we're capturing some of the lingual detail, we're capturing some of the labial detail as well and we're getting a nice solid three-dimensional representation of the anterior teeth. And then as we move towards the posterior region again it's fine, we can just stay from an occlusal, surface, an occlusal aspect. The scan window, the depth, the, the range of the, the, the scanning volume, or the scanning area, pretty much starts off from around about the, the surface of the tip to about 12 millimeters below. So when we're scanning, we can rest on the surface of the teeth, or perhaps a millimeter or two above that. When I'm scanning, I do like to use a finger. Use some, use a finger, use your thumb, use some other aspect, some other, something else physical to act as a as a guide on the scanner. It just means that you're not relying on on you holding your hand nice and steady. You know, you're gonna obviously you're gonna be using your finger to maybe ret retract the cheeks or the lips, and you can manipulate your finger in such a way that it will act as a guide whilst scanning. So we don't want to be too far. We like to rest on the surface of the teeth and what we do need to be cognizant of is the fact that at some point because of the height of the incisors perhaps or canines it is possible for those incisal edges to go into the scan window it doesn't affect the scanner at all, by, by, by any means but the problem is that those details are not going to be scanned so then there's a risk that you might have to, to rescan that area so it's just a little thing to watch out for Okay, so with that in mind, I think we're ready to, to start scanning. So the software guides us through the three stages of scanning. We want to scan the lower arch, scan the upper arch, and then we're going to scan the two together in occlusion. We scan the lower, we scan the upper, and we scan the two together in occlusion. So we get the patient to bite into the uh, correct occlusion. And we take a buckle scan. Let's see if we can show you that. So we take a buckle scan on the right hand side, we take a buckle scan on the left hand side. We only need to capture three or four units. The, the, the old saying, the cliched saying of more, less is more, it certainly holds through here. The less detail we have once it's within reason, so as I say, three or four units, a four or five second scan, that's all we need. If we try and do an occlusal scan that's much greater, contains more detail, then the software has more of a job to do in order to carry out the alignment. It can be delayed and sometimes the software actually struggles and then needs you to, to give some assistance. So as a, as a rule, less is more. So let's go ahead. So we've got the green arrow on, on the lower arch. There's no rule as to which arch we start with. If we want to start with the upper arch, we click on the upper arch here. We get the green arrow on the upper arch. But I'll follow standard pr protocol. We'll scan the lower arch first. So the scanner, we've got a push button to, to start scanning, push button to stop. So we just press it once, nice firm push and release, and that will uh, initiate the scanning process. push the button and we start scanning. So what we're seeing on this screen, we're seeing two images. We see the image at the bottom right hand side which is the live feed from the scanner and in the center of the screen 
we see the three-dimensional image being produced. So you will notice that we've captured, we've captured a lot of the occlusal detail. And as I rotate, we have seen, we have captured some lingual and some buccal detail here, and particularly here. But look at the incisal area. We haven't captured a whole lot of labial detail there. Is that an issue? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. You may have noticed that when I did the scan, when I came around to the anterior region, I just did one sweep. Whereas I should have gone back, I should have considered the anterior region, I should have rocked forward and back, forward and back. This lack of detail here is considered a weakness. And the implications of that weakness is that the when we continue our additional passes, there's a risk that that additional detail will not be stitched onto the surface of the scan in an appropriate manner. So, in the interest of getting a good scan, I'm going to delete that scan. So I hit the clear button that was down here, the little trash can icon, and I'm going to scan again. Now watch what happens this time. So again, start from posterior region and go on occlusally. And when I get to the anterior region, I'm going to rock the scanner forward and back. You see what's happening? See the bottom right hand side of the screen? We're getting to see the details we need to see. The software, the software is then creating a nice accurate scan. When I rotate the model, now we're seeing a lot more detail. And we've got another little bonus. We've got part of my finger in there. That's not a problem. Well, it might look as if it's a problem right now, it's not because when we scan around the the buccal surface, my finger won't be there anymore, and the software recognizes that. And it, the software recognizes that if it has scanned something, and then that detail isn't there the next time it scans that area, it realizes it's soft tissue, and therefore it will delete that from the from the scan process, or from the from the scanned image, should I say? Okay. I've stopped. So I press the button once to start it, I press it again to stop. I want to start again. When I'm starting again, the software is expecting me to, to start again from the last place where I left off, which was, of course, on the, the lower right side. So I'm going to start from there. And as I do so, I roll over. And all of the time, I'm trying to keep that scan tip as close to the surface of the teeth as possible and as true or as perpendicular to the surface as possible. Okay, so now at this point we can see we've captured all of our occlusal detail and we've captured a nice level of our lingual detail as well. When I say nice level, what I really mean is we've captured everything and then we continue on. So I can press the button once, continue on, roll over to the buckle side, and sweep forward. And you notice as I sweep forward, you can see where my finger was initially, where that scan of my finger occurred, it has now disappeared. So, at this point, I am going to stop, because I want to start from the posterior region again. So we've pretty much got everything. We just need to capture some buccal detail here on the right hand side and then we're all set. I could have pulled the scanner away and continued from, from that point, but this time, just to illustrate a point, I'm going to start from the, the buccal region, the posterior region shall I say. So let's say I do that. I start again. Now as far as the software is concerned, See the bottom right hand side, as far as the scanner is concerned, I am at the posterior region. I'm on the occlusal surface of that molar. As far as the software is concerned, it's waiting for me to start scanning again at the anterior region. I have two choices. One is, I can listen to the software, I can pay attention to the software, and I can go back to the anterior region. I can do that. And once I do so, the scanner picks up where I was and continue scanning again. 
or alternatively, if I really do want to start from this position again, I click on the tooth that I want to start on. So I click on the, the tooth, and you'll notice that as I clicked on the tooth, when I click on it, the little box appears around the tooth, and that's a very positive indication to us. That's the software saying, yes, I understand, I now know that's where you want to start from. So we click on the tooth, orientate ourselves around that tooth, around the same position, roll over, and complete our scan. And that's it. If there's any detail that the software that, that we've missed, whether it's due to the software or due to the scanner, there's detail missing. The software shows that. You can just about make it out. We got some, some green areas there. Okay, I want to recapture that scan. So the first thing I do, I click on that tooth, I say to the software, that's where I'm going to start. Rescan, and maybe a little bit of twisting and rolling of the scanner is going to is going to help there. Again, if we consider that detail, it's in it's in a nice little tight corner. In order for the scanner to capture the detail, we need to make sure that that tip is as square as possible to that edge. So, of course, it's nice and easy to do it this way when we've got a, a scanner on a model, but in the patient's mouth, that's not so possible. So, we would typically orientate the tip like this and maybe roll it and tip it and rotate it in order to make sure that the scanner is looking in that corner as, as square as possible. There are some other areas there with a little bit of a green detail showing, but to be fair, I think that that is a more, more than appropriate level of detail that's required. This is an orthodontic case. When the software sees that there's a hole, the software closes that hole, and it does so in a very clever way. It considers the shape and the contours of the surface in the, in the vicinity of that hole, and it closes the hole in order to, uh, to uh, accommodate that or complement that existing detail. So, but of course, if you feel, if you review the case after the scan and you feel, well, really, that's okay, I'm happy with that. This one here, I'm not so sure about. We click on that tooth. And we go back in again and rescan. And again, a little bit of tipping and twisting is all that we need. And job done. And you got to consider as well, wh why are we taking this? Are we taking this as a model record? This is a stone model. It's very obvious there, in fact, how um, we got all these blebs and blowholes. We've got all these defects on the model that are a result of conventional um, alginate impression taking, or in fact, even PBS impression taking, and traditional or conventional um, casting techniques. So. You know, you got to consider. Well, if that is norm, that kind of those kind of defects are normally acceptable to us. Well, then a small little defect, which is very small in comparison, um, as a result of the scanning process, really isn't all that um, all that concern. You got to trade. You got to make a, a, a balance. You got to trade off between being in the patient's mouth longer and uh, and and then scanning for longer and cap trying to capture more data and read really the risk or the, the consideration of well, what if that data was just left as it is. As I say, small holes, the software is going to close those details, it does a really job closing it, so it's it's probably even better than, than a, a good technician filling a hole on a plaster model with some additional plaster. So once we've got the lower arch done we're, and we're happy with it, we can then continue to the upper arch. So we click on upper arch here, and the green arrow goes on to the upper model, and we're ready to go. So for scanning a patient, of course, we're going to take the tip off, and we're going to rotate the tip so that we're scanning from the scanning the top side of the arch. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to leave the scan tip as it is. It makes no difference. The software doesn't mind. Um, you, it's up to yourself to decide which way you want to keep the, the tip during scanning, whether scanning stone models or, of course, scanning a patient. Okay, so let's go again. We're going to follow exactly the same scan process. 
So we start the posterior region and we move forward. Again, we get to our incisors. We rock a little forward and back, capture some lingual or palatal and labial detail. We roll over. We capture the palatal detail. You'll notice that I'm following the arch all the time. Yes, we do have a palate. Yes, we do want to capture the palate. But if we're going to capture the palate, the best approach is to capture the, ling the palatal detail first and then move in and capture the palate. And once we capture all of the palate, we're going to go to the posterior region. Roll over, buckle, labial. I come away, I can leave the scanner on, I don't have to stop it. I can leave it on. I come back again. And I'm going to just sweep around again just to capture a little bit more soft tissue. And that's it done. We review the case, make sure we're happy with all of the detail, which looks good in this case. Perhaps on distal on that six, we could do it some more detail. I click on that tooth, I position the scanner around that tooth. A little bit of rocking and rolling, and we can capture exactly what we need. And it's all good. Again, how much detail do we need? How much soft tissue do we need? Well, this is really based on the reason for taking the, the model. If we intend making an appliance, if it was, for example, a Holly retainer, well then, of course, we're going to need to capture some more palatal detail. If it's a, an Essex retainer or a vacuum formed or blow down type retainer, well then we might want to make sure that we've got at least the marginal detail plus an extra few millimeters. So in this case, I think it will prob probably be worthwhile to go back in and rescan an additional piece of detail just around here. So I've highlighted the tooth I'm going to start from. And capture some more detail, and that's it. So we've scanned the lower, we've scanned the upper. Now we're ready to go and scan the two together in occlusion. So, the software is offering some suggestions there on the, on the bite scan. As I pointed out initially, we scanned, the, the, we do two, we carry out two bite scans. We scan the right hand side, we scan the left hand side. We start from the back, work forward, and th three or four units is all we need, and less is more. So the software does indicate to us here, we've got a green arrow that's indicating we're going to scan the right hand side of the patient. So, we're working with stone models. Again, nice and easy for us here. We're going to scan the right hand side. We're going to scan the left hand side. In a real case, obviously in the patient's mouth, we're going to have cheeks in the way. We're going to have lips in the way. So very often, we would ask the patient to open up, get the tip in, push the cheek away, have the patient bite down, and then commence the scan. And that works great if the patient has a repeatable and reliable and stable bite. If the patient doesn't have such a stable bite, well then we might just have to maybe use a mirror or some form of attraction, even a finger, just to pull the cheek away and push the scanner in. We like to work from the back and move forward, back and move forward. It gives us a better result and it's more comfortable on the patient. You try to push this into the patient's mouth, there's going to be a risk of this snagging on the cheek and it's going to and drag the cheek. It's going to become un uncomfortable. So, starting with the right hand side, I'll just orientate the models like so, just so you get to see. Push the button. Three or four units. More is less. How long was that? Three, four seconds. 
straight away we can jump in and start scanning the right hand side. Put the scanner back in its cradle and let the software do what it needs to do. So we've got a full upper image, uh, a full image of the upper model, a full image of the lower model, and then two partial scans, one on the right hand side, one on the left hand side. And the stop software is going to align those to give us a very accurate occlusion. And there we go. So, in the bottom right hand side of the screen, you get to see um, an icon for byte 1 and byte 2. So the software is showing us here byte 2, the byte, the scan on the left hand side. It's shown in the blue kind of color and we can see how well the software has managed to overlay the occlusal scan with each of the individual upper and lower scans. If we click on byte 1 we get to see how it looks on, on the opposite side. Of course it makes sense if the patient's bite was not stable and the patient was biting one way as we scan the right hand side and then another way as we scan the left hand side well then there's a risk that the software is not going to be able to create a good alignment so it is important that we at this point before the patient leaves the chair that we review the bite and make sure that everything is okay if it's, if we're unhappy with the bite if it was a case that maybe the patient did the, their occlusion moved between one scan and the other scan we can click on bite 2 for example, let's say it was the left hand side, I can hit clear. Are you sure you want to clear the active occlusion? If I say yes, the software then just expects me to go ahead and rescan that. But in this case, I'm going to say no. Why? Because I'm very happy with, with what's going on. What can happen from time to time is that the software cannot do the alignment automatically. And what you'll be presented with is something like this. Here the software is struggling to align the uh, upper and lower arches with the occlusal scan. So we need to do some, uh, some manual alignment. More often than not, if the ca software can't do it, it won't do it. It's very, very rare that the software will do a bad job. It's either a good job or it's no job. So sometimes when the software tries to go through the alignment process, this is all we're presented with. So it's up to ourselves now to, to provide some guidance. The software will still do it uh, an alignment based on the best fit between that image and that image, and the best fit between that and that. We just need to give it a little bit of assistance. So manipulating the models on screen, I'm using the Trios pod, I'm using a laptop or a PC in this case. So my right mouse button is going to allow me to rotate the models. If we're using a Trios cart, and we've got a touch screen, well simply touching the screen and dragging our finger across the screen will allow us to rotate the model. So, okay, right mouse button allows everything to rotate. If I use the left mouse button on one of the images, well now I can just rotate that one image. So what I like to do initially is just give a, an initial alignment, just make sure that we're looking at the two in a, in a very similar view. The software is asking us, please set a marker point on the lower jaw scan. I can select any point. Any point that is available on this image and this image. And just as a rule of thumb, we like to aim for something that's pretty much in the center of this image. So we can see there, we've got that bicuspid or premolar. We could take anything that, that is identifiable. We do have a little bleb or the, the ginge of it does go into a kind of a point. So I'm gonna pick that point there. I selected a point there. This image goes blue. The software is now expecting me to select the corresponding point on that image. And when I do so, the software then brings the two together, the two images together. It's now asking me to select an image on the upper scan. So again, going back, we've got a motor, we've got a bicuspid, a premotor, and, and another premotor. So maybe somewhere there, in the proximal region between those two teeth, I'm gonna aim for that. I select my, my point on the blue image first, and then I select on this blue image, and it looks good. Now, the software has only done alignment based on this scan, so we need to do the alignment on the other buckle scan as well. So we hit next, click on next. 
the models open up and the software presents to us the again the scan the occlusal scan from the right hand side or left hand side now in this particular case it's actually back to front so what we might need to do is spin it around so I'm just clicking and dragging and rotating now I see the inside of that scan and if I flip it around around a horizontal axis now it's looking like it's in the correct orientation so again on the lower side I aim for a point that's consistent there's a little defect on the surface of that tooth select there and there looks good again we've got these three teeth I select a point I'll use that little defect on the on the surface of the model and then the software does its alignment so now the alignment the occlusion that we get between the upper and lower arches is based on the best achievable fit between the byte scan on the left hand side and the byte scan on the right hand side you can click on done what have we got we've got a green tick here on the lower arch a green tick here on the upper arch a green tick here on the occlusion we have completed our scan what about this though look let's say down here I'm missing a bit of detail I'm thinking oh I want to go back in rescan that can I do it yes I can I select the arch I want to work on it's the lower arch I just want to capture another little bit of detail here just just to be sure I tell the software this is where I'm going to rescan from I take my model I take the scanner I go I fill the hole and now when I go back to the occlusal scan all of the alignment is still done we don't have to redo anything but we do see that we got some additional detail there and that's it the case is complete of course I've taken it forward and back forward and back rescanned stopped during scans to explain various things so it has taken us maybe uh, uh, several minutes to to get through the case but the process is very simple and straightforward there's one other thing that I uh, failed to mention while I was scanning and that's the relationship between the window on the bottom right hand side and and the main image so perhaps we'll go back to the lower scan and just revisit that for a couple of moments and and talk about it you may have also noticed that in the background we get this clicking noise that clicking noise is very very useful you got to consider when we're scanning we've got to focus in the on the patient's mouth with the scanner we've also got to focus on the screen we got to focus on the image that we're capturing and the image in the bottom right hand side which is exactly what the scanner is seeing when we hear the clicking noise that's a positive indication to us that's the software saying yep I understand where you are I'm capturing data keep going you're doing a great job when the clicking stops that's the message to say well I'm not sure where you're at I'm, I'm struggling to capture data here and that's the point where you would refer back to the screen so let's let's look at that in a little bit more detail and in doing so I can introduce you to another tool here as well so then we've got a little scissors icon it's called trim let's say for whatever reason there was some detail on that scan that you weren't happy with okay we can trim out that detail maybe it was a bubble of saliva or in restorative cases it could be some blood or maybe you wanted to revisit the, the, the preparation for orthodontic cases it's rare that we need to do this we might do it though if if there was some lip or tongue um, detail in the way and it was obscuring what we we're trying to do we might like to go in and trim it as well so we've got a series of of different uh, paint brushes I'm just gonna go in clear out a good bit of data there okay so we've got a series of paint brushes one millimeter diameter two millimeters four millimeters we've got this notion of a patch let's consider my thumb my, or my finger got in the way there during that part of the scan I'm gonna go in I'm gonna trim away that finger I trim away a little bit and that part of it you can see because it's not connected to anything that part of it is actually regarded as an island or a patch if I hit this icon here this, la this first one it's called all patches it removes that patch so we don't have to airbrush away the whole area we can just 
separate it from the model and then click on patches turn it into a patch and then delete the patch when we're finished uh, trimming we click on done okay I want to go back in here and rescan so the software if I click on scan if I initiate the scan process again with my push button the software is going to continue scanning from the last point which anybody remember I believe was around about here when we just captured that additional detail sure now let's consider what we're at the bottom right hand side of the screen the live feed image down here that's exactly what the scan scanner sees I bring my finger in the scanner sees my finger the software is now trying to match that finger with some detail in this region. It can't because it doesn't exist. I scan the molar region. The software is now trying to match the molar with this detail. It can't. And also it's, it's worth pointing out we've got a red box here. We've got no clicking as well. But as soon as we bring the scanner to the region where the software is expecting us to be, then we get the clicking noise, then we get the green box and that's our indication from the software that it's doing everything that it needs to do that it's able to stitch the data that's been captured onto the data that already, that already exists and it's really happy with that okay I want to start again happy with that. As a rule of thumb, you will find that it is easier to recommence a scan from the posterior region rather than the anterior region. And why is that? Well, if we consider how the, the scanning technology works and what it likes to, to work with, it really likes interesting geometry. We take a, a typical arch the molars are really interesting aren't they there's lots of lots of variation in the geometry there we consider incisors and they're plain old incisors in fact the four incisors look very very similar to each other so the result of that is if we try to start scanning from incisors the software is not sometimes it's not quite so sure where it should be whereas we tend to get a much better um, scan initiation if we start from from a molar so what I would have liked to have done there would have in a in a real situation if we consider this scan again let's consider that what I would be inclined to do click on the molar click on the molar and start scanning from the molar just go forward and back, make sure we capture all of that detail. And that looks good. There's another point to that as well. As I just said, it's easier for the scanner to capture, to, to re restart itself on in challenging detail, like on a molar. Also, you kind of got to consider when we're in the patient's mouth, it is more comfortable and it's easier for us to scan. Uh, um, from the back and pull forward rather than from the fr fr front forward position and then push back. Once we're happy with that we can go into the next stage which is analysis and we have a, a icon for direction of insertion which is presented here, which from an orthodontic standpoint isn't that really of any relevance. Uh, it's more from a restorative standpoint. But we can click on clearance. And what the software will do is give us an occlusal map. We can see this color coded map appearing on the occlusal surface of the teeth. If I click on switch view, the model's open. We're viewing the models from an occlusal perspective. 
and we're getting this color coded representation. Anywhere that shows up as being blue or deep red is indicating contact. And it's a nice little graphical representation as to how well those models or how well those um, arches are biting together. If we found that there was no red or there was no blue, it tends that will indicate that the bite was open. Maybe that's how the patient's, what the patient's bite is like. Maybe it's not. So it's a tool It's quite useful to help us validate to make sure that we've got the correct occlusion. We hit done and then we hit send. Little envelope icon. The software gives us an overview of the, the case, the lab it's going to go to, the patient's name, some what information was contained within the scan and once we're happy with all of that we hit send order. If at this point you realized uh oh wrong patient information wrong lab we can of course go back to the very first stage which is our, our order form hit change lab we can change the patient information there if we want to if it was of any relevance if we had some patient images if we were sending this straight out to the to the lab if we had some patient images that we felt were important we could click on patient images click add image and we're brought into our usual uh, windows browser we can find images for that patient and then attach them and then go back to send and we're all done off we go so I hope that was useful I hope that uh, covered a lot of points and, and some uh, considerations it's great to start scanning with models if you can start scanning models you know you're, you're halfway there scanning in the mouth yes we've got some other considerations to contend with we got saliva we've got tongue we've got cheeks we've got lips We've got patients. We got reactions. So we and um, we've got limited space um, to to maneuver with it. But start scanning models. Get comfortable scanning models, and then it's on to the next stage of scanning uh, scanning patients. So thanks for your time. Hope it was useful.